Buzz Williams joins us here courtside 96 89 the final you guys were down 18 in the under 12 fought your heart out it was uh, your character showed again today you guys really battled them I thought I thought the uh, their fight and their togetherness uh, their competitive chemistry synergy was uh, bigger than Disney World it was I was uh, thankful for the opportunity to have a front row seat one thing about it the buzz you talk about that you don't want to overload them one thing you don't worry about in prepping them is that competitive nature that you build and build and build and that was evident down 18 and it didn't it wasn't three guys it was everybody that was playing that was battling it was so good I think we were down eight at the last ATO of the first half we go in down three at half uh, they're completely cremating us in the first ATO. I call the timeout. And then, uh, like you guys said, uh, it, down 18, and it's, it's a, I think it was a two-possession game at the last ATO. Yeah, just uh, of all the things that could go wrong, a lot of them went wrong. Um, but the response of the guys that – were able to play after Henry got hurt and Boots went out. Like, I, I thought they were yeah. phenomenal. You do it with those two guys down. But the other thing is, Buzz, and I think it's to your point that you make, there's so many factors in the success of a team. And, you know, you talk about out-rebounding by 21, awesome. You do that. You out-rebound, you almost doubled them up on the offensive <laughs> glass. I just, told, I just told the guys we're play, uh, we call our offensive rebounders go-gets. And... Um, Statistically speaking, Henry is otherworldly as a go-get thus far through four games. He's not in there. And, and Boots, is, uh, as a perimeter go-get, is, is pretty special, I think. And we finished with the highest offensive rebound percentage we have since we've been at Texas A&M. 60% of the shots we missed, we got back. And uh, that just speaks to the importance of Henry and Boots. We think about uh, that. But it speaks to everybody else that played more minutes and had more of a role uh, just so uh, I hate the result but I love the lessons that come from this you think about this buzz they got seven offensive rebounds they had two to start the half that means they had five the rest of the way or you know they, they had that the, the entire game and one of them greenly makes a three that, that was and, late I know uh, yeah and you know but anyway I remember so I'm, that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, now, that, now that you bring it up <laughs> sorry about that but I mean just the battle nature <laughs> and you talk you talk about solo and Anderson you talk about warriors those guys don't know any other speed than I thought we were I you. thought we were first to the floor on nearly every 50 50 ball uh, I thought our communication level was really good. We had a lot of guys doing things that they haven't had many reps of uh, in practice with zero reps of doing it in a game, particularly in a game that you're playing from behind in. Uh, so good. So good on a lot of levels. Uh, great experience in game number six for our guys. And now how we handle from now until Sunday night at 630. Uh, where's Henry going to be? Where's Boots going to be? Who are we going to play? We're not going to know that till 8 o'clock tonight. How are we going to handle the day off tomorrow from playing, but the day off that's needed for prep going into Sunday? And so there's so many lessons for all of us, uh, and I'm at the front of the line on, on the lessons. But I, I really respect and admire the competitive nature that our guys played with. One of the things, though, Buzz, I'll also say was because they said reps, reps, reps. On the fly in the second half, you well, and your coaches we did were, things. We were making a lot of changes. That's what I mean. There they, was a lot going on right, over there. Right, and so the fact that they go through those and they work, you know, to, to battle back and do what you did, those are just, they're things that they'll always have now going forward. Yeah, I, I, um, I hope that we win every game the rest of the season. And I have a lot of respect. I hadn't started studying these guys until yesterday when I watched them play after us. They are really good. Uh, you can tell that their experience, their talent, their coaching. Uh, I think they've lost five games uh, in the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. They're really good and they're going to win a bunch more games. But for us to play them 
was so good. For us to play them with all of these things that transpired, even better. For us to play them with all of those things that transpired in week number three uh, of the season, so good. For us to have to do it on the same 24-hour rest period that they did, so good. So there's, there's layers and byproducts of those lessons. But like I just told the guys, the whole key now is can we take the lessons that we're learning from each step and apply it the next day? We can't wait to apply it to the next game. We need to incorporate that into where we're at and apply it to tomorrow when we work. And so then we're just a little bit better when we get to the game on Sunday. Oh, Basaki, 13 points. Garcia, 13 rebounds. It's one of those games where those. And then, you know, like Andy was like, Coach, I need a sub. And I'm like, yeah, I was thinking about that too. You got any ideas? <laughs> and he goes, Coach, I, I'm tired. I go, I'm tired watching you. We don't have anybody else. So uh, when you shoot that free throw, take a couple of extra breaths because I ain't subbing you out. I love Solo doing the maturity that guy's going. I know he's growing, man. He's special. He's a special human being, and I, I, I as everybody knows, I've I've had uh, a lot of positive things to say about him. Not as far as his talent, that's that's obvious. But he's a special person, and he is growing at a rapid rate. And uh, like I wrote him in his note today at the bottom I said I'm sorry that growing up fast is so difficult but you're handling it so well Great he's point. he's, he's he, he understands it he's incredibly intelligent way more intelligent than I am so he understands it but it's just hard hey solo I I, I know this is game six of your third semester in college you got to play like you're in your sixth semester. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's the way it's going to roll. That's right. Buzz, thanks. You said it best. Hate the result. Love the effort. Love what this could do for your yeah, team I, down the yeah, stretch. I, yeah. that, I know that sounds like coach speak. You're supposed to win every game, and if you don't win enough, they fire you. Like, I completely understand. But the one thing that I have peace about as a coach is the relationship that I have with the people, mm -hmm. with the staff, and with the players. And – uh, not to be Coach Saban in the process, like I'm not smart enough for all of those things, but I, but I do know that when your relationship is built on love, when your relationship is built on trust, and everybody believes in the work that you're doing, I think over time the results will play themselves out. It doesn't on Twitter, uh, it doesn't in social media, but relative to Team Bus One, I think there's great congruity in what we're doing and the belief in which we're doing it with. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, thank you. That's Buzz Williams post game. St. Joseph's Health post game show continues. The official health care provider of Texas A&M Athletics. This is Aggie basketball by Learfield.